Yo, what's good, YouTube? Apparently, there's a Larry Bird versus LeBron James story. I didn't know this existed, <laughs> me being a LeBron fan. I have to watch this. Make sure I like, comment, subscribe. <sighs> Hopefully, LeBron doesn't get cooked. <laughs> I know he didn't face him, but I'm like, I wonder what story this could be. In the book titled, When the Game Was Ours, written by Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan shared his 100% honest opinion about Larry Bird. He said, People ask me all the time who my top five players are, and when I start saying Larry, they interrupt me. They say, You've got to be kidding me. He can't play with LeBron James. I tell them, You guys don't get it. Larry is far better than any small forward who played the game. Now, the lazy person would chalk that statement up to Michael Jordan being a LeBron hater. He's not even looking at the. I think he was, was looking, he looking at Michael at, Jordan. I was thinking the same thing. Michael Jordan's a little left of that Charlotte bench. I think that was a look at Michael like. That's a hard. But not too long ago, Good this cap. was common knowledge. If you give me both these guys and you say you can start your team with either Larry Bird or LeBron James, oh, you take a LeBron. I'm taking Larry Bird. Don't All right, yeah. So end of the video. Make sure I like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Y'all still watching? Okay. Guess I gotta finish it. That was okay. That was. It's not bombastic, but we all know who the real king is. And I'm not. taking my chances. No, Thank you very not. much. You know why? Larry yes. Bird was the baddest son of a gun on the planet. Yeah, this was like when LeBron was what, a rookie when they were saying this. Let's get some updated results. <laughs> he's 36 still in the league. It's been a decade since these. Come on. In a league with Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. Isaiah Thomas. Oh, so uh, whoa. <laughs> the... That's a move, Larry. In a league with Magic Johnson, oh, my. Isaiah Thomas. I did see that in the big save. What was that? <laughs> I'm so he was the best player in the world when the NBA and was at a, when a greater level. In the world. It ain't the same NBA. This, 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 this sucker oh. won three straight MVPs. Let me ask you this. Would, would Magic Bird couldn't get through him at one point. He'd be the best player in the world right now. I believe he would. Oh, oh he'd be better than Kevin Durant. I believe he would. Yeah. No. I got Larry Bird over Kevin Durant. I got Larry Bird over Kevin Durant. From what I've seen from Larry Bird, all the reactions I've done. I got Larry Bird over Kevin Durant. Over LeBron as a stretch. No, I believe he no, would. No, he wouldn't. Okay, Larry he Bird, if, he, if, he, if his back didn't give out on him, if he didn't have surgery, if his body didn't fail him, talking about we're having a whole different conversation about Larry Legend. He, we're sorry. not. He's he, not lying, though. If if his back didn't give out, if he didn't have all those injuries, <laughs> he might... <laughs> I don't know. He might have been dead. He could have taken Jordan's run. Like, I'm being completely honest. If... <laughs> He could have, like, the run Jordan went on to become the best player of all time. Jo Bird could have been the one who we all know is the best player of all time. If he didn't, I'm not going to lie to you. Because <laughs> the way he was cooking Jordan, <laughs> if he just kept doing that without any injuries or pushbacks, I don't hate this idea. He had it, it just all. didn't happen. So. so, Larry Bird or LeBron James? And for the record... If you ask me who I'd take over 20 years, I'd take LeBron. But if you ask me who I'd take for one season, it gets very interesting. Mm. Because I'd take a 1986 Larry Bird season over any single season performance from any player that ever lived. And if you ask me who I'd take for one... That's disrespect on LeBron. Uh, 2016. Um... I'm taking that 2016 chip LeBron run over this Larry Bird. I'll be honest. One game or better well, two yet, minutes one shot. Just not well, I'll let someone who actually lived through the Bird era tell you what they think. All I know is one game from my... Skip Bayless, bro. <laughs> this is your king. This, <laughs> this is who you're going to use for... Okay, let me my stop life? pausing. 
I want Larry Joe Bird taking my last shot. That guy from French Lick, Indiana. Game on the line, free throw, three, jump shot, whatever it was. I'll take Larry Bird any day or any night over especially LeBron James. Yeah, now, if you're still a Larry Legend denier, I'm about to tell you how one shot changed the course of history, helped rewrite the narrative of an entire generation, and almost made Larry Bird the undisputed greatest of all time. Now, time and time again, Larry Bird came up clutch in the biggest situations. Ash looking, looking. Seen all of these one-legged three game winner happened back to back by the way he had to do it twice we're talking about clutch right now if we're talking about who was more clutch so in the 1987 NBA hmm. Finals versus the Lakers, Larry one. Bird and the Boston Celtics were trying to repeat as NBA champions. Celtic Nation came to expect it. And in game four at the Boston Garden, with the Celtics down two to one in the series, the game came down to the wire. Boston four, LA two. Spin fade, my lord. Boston. It's a three on three break. Cooper. Magic Johnson assist. And hits it with a minute and a half to go. A long time ago. Kareem oh. does it. And the Lakers jumping for joy. And they lead it 104 to 104. Jumping for joy. Timeout called by Casey Jones. And coming out of a timeout, Larry Bird, as confident as ever, tells his defender, James Worthy, exactly what he's going to do to him. He would come out of a timeout. I remember this one time. You might have heard this before because he did it with a lot of people. I had to <laughs> guard him. You know the play is coming, but he would tell you it's coming. With DJ handling, Mikhail's going to set up a pick for, for Robert. That's only to free him up to come and set a pick for me. And he says, if you trail, I'm going to trail into the lane to a little floater. Ooh, he said, if you try to get over the top, he said, I'm going to pop to that corner and bust a jumper in your fucking face. <laughs> I'm like... Fuck you, man. I'm, I'm all up on it. <laughs> you know, I got his shirt tail. I'm holding it. You know, I'm like, you. You, know I'm like, you know where I'm from. I'm from Gastonia. Man, he ain't talking. He ain't gonna... Sure enough, man. Let me. He, the ball comes in. <laughs> DJ takes a couple of dribbles. I'm quick. I'm quick enough. I think I can get over the top. I, I, I get over the top. I get out there, but he pops to the corner and I'm running. He kind of waiting, you know. Waiting. Uh, <laughs> he was an asshole. Cooked him. And the Lakers call time with 12 seconds left. Larry Bird with a big three-point bomb has given the Celtics the lead. With the Celtics up by two, Kareem comes down and gets fouled with eight seconds left. He makes the first. And misses the second. And it's Lakers ball with seven seconds to go. One Celtic rebound could have sealed this game. But the ball goes out of bounds and the Lakers get the possession. And with seven seconds to go, the Lakers still had life. Just three years earlier, in the 1984 Finals versus the Celtics, Magic Johnson choked in a similar situation, earning the nickname Tragic Johnson. Uh. But this time, he was ready. My man switched to Kareem, and Kevin McHale jumped out to me. As soon as I saw Kevin, I said, oh, I'm taking him. This was in the documentary. You know, Magic puts it on the floor, a couple head and shoulder fakes. One, two. He raised up in the uh. air, and there was nobody. That was gonna get that shot. Oh. Down by one, with two seconds on the clock, Larry Bird and the Celtics find themselves in a situation they've been in many times before. Johnson on the inbound. One to the corner. Jump fade. Freeze. What do you think happened? Now let's give this shot some context. For two years straight, the Boston that. Celtics had the greatest home court advantage of all time. Oh, see? Yeah, I was going to say that, bro. 
their home court advantage must have been nuts. Bro. <laughs> that 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 aura, those fans that just not not just toxic, but in your face, loud, supportive, real raw energy. You don't you don't see that anymore in, in, in stadiums. At least in America, over over in England and soccer, obviously. They have more of a I don't know, pride for their teams. Here it's just, oh yeah, defense, defense. So, the prior year in 1986, the Celtics finished with a regular season record of 40 and one. Mm. This record still stands as the best regular season home record ever. Yes, better than Michael Jordan's 96 Bulls, and better than Steph Curry's 2016 or 2017 Golden State Warriors. And if you include the playoffs. They were 50 and 1 oh at my, home. Oh my God. So, for everyone who thinks the 96 Bulls and the 2017 Warriors are the two best teams of all time, they at are. home, Larry Bird's 1986 Celtics were better. Let that sink in. It's not, it's not really that Larry Bird stat, though. That's a Boston Celtics arena fan stat. Someone asked me the other day, they said, it's the toughest arena you had to play in. And I said, uh, Garden, Boston. I said they were almost impossible to go in there and beat because you could not make a mistake with them. Those guys made you play, and it was him. Like he was like a, he was a savant on the court, like just a savant, like two plays ahead on everything. And so, please let's not forget how hard it was to go into Boston and be the team when Bird is in his prime. Unfortunately, the Celtics fell off that following year in 1987. They were 39 and two. At home, That's so including the playoffs for the last two years, the Celtics were 99 and four at the Boston Garden up That's until insane. that shot by Bird. This means statistically there was a 96 percent chance that, is that, that potential game-winning shot by Bird was going in. Now, what do you think happened? Well, they set up a great play. That's insane. Bird, I did not know that. Worthy all the way up. Those stops Forced are the wild. denial all the way up. We, we've done it before. Clear everybody out. Go to the ball. Break to the corner. Axe looking, looking. Loops it to Brun. Two seconds left. In the bird. He fires. He has. Catch and shoot. Ball. Hall of Fame. It's good. It's good. And the Celtics win it. It's in on the inbound. Bird fires it. He caught it here, and as he caught it, all he had to do was turn. And just turn, and he just let this thing go. Bird fires it. Got a wide open look. Couldn't believe it. And I'm standing right there. It is straight as an arrow. And the Lakers have won in Pat Riley. And the Lakers dance off the court. I have a bad memory. <laughs> I have a bad memory. 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 He got me. He got me with all this hype up. Oh my gosh. The hype up made me com forget completely that he missed this shot. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh my gosh. He got me. He got me. He got me. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. You were lucky. That's because bad. Because it was right online. That's bad. He looked at me like, how did you ever leave me that uh, way? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I got bad memory. Changed the whole series. Every time I watch that shot, I still think it's going in. Larry thought it was going in. Magic thought it was going in. Pat Riley thought it was going in. If Larry Bird took that exact same shot in that exact same situation 10 times, he'd probably hit nine of them. And if Larry Bird hits that shot, then the series is tied two to two. And with the next game at the Boston Garden, there's no way you can convince me that this Celtic team with the greatest home court advantage of all time, led by one of the most clutch players in NBA history, so doesn't win that right next home game. So instead of being down three to two, going back to LA, 
and losing those NBA Finals, the Celtics would have been up 3-2. to two. And with all of that momentum on the Celtics side, all they needed to do was win one game in LA to give Larry Bird his fourth title, add another Finals MVP to his collection, become the first team to win back-to-back -back titles since Bill Russell with the Celtics in the 60s, and silence all doubt on who won the Bird vs. Magic rivalry. One shot could have changed everything. And the conversation about the greatest player of all time would have been very different. Larry Bird at his best, LeBron James at his best. Oh, I gotta go with Larry Joe. I gotta go with Larry Joe. You take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. When Reggie Miller said that, it was headline news the next day because the media fawns over LeBron James more than ever. But to many Larry Legend truthers, it wasn't a surprise at all. Skip, Reggie would take Bird over LeBron. Do you concur, my friend? I do concur. This is prime first take. This is prime first take. This is this is when Skip was in his biggest cat bag in his life. <laughs> He was saying anything and everything that was against LeBron. This, this, this as proof is, <laughs> is not good enough proof. In a hypothetical draft, would I take him over LeBron James to start my my franchise? Yes, I would. And, and I don't think it's even close. Of course you would, Skip. Now you would think that Skip Bayless, as the ultimate contrarian, would be challenged by his co-host for such an opinion. However, this is one of the rare things that they 100% agreed on. You know, in terms of leadership, in terms of clutch, in terms of shooting ability, and overall championship credentials, not just trophies, but a mentality, Larry Bird gets the nod over LeBron James. Stephen A is I, not I'm trustworthy. I'm guessing that right now about 80% of <laughs> the viewing audience either. does not agree with either one of us. Well, that, that, all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. I would love to pick LeBron, but in terms of clutch, money time, there's no there's no contest. He's not even in Larry Bird's class. Right. Not even close. All it's right. not even close. If you like Stephen stats, a. here's Larry Bird versus LeBron James season stats while both are at the age of 30. Larry Bird averages more points, more rebounds, more assists, and has a higher... Why can't we do their whole career? Oh, Larry Bird got injured. LeBron doesn't get injured. He's just built different. It's not his fault. He gets injured. He keeps playing. Still makes the playoffs. Nothing against Larry Bird, by the way. I love Larry Bird. <laughs> a field goal percentage. So when someone asks you, what is Larry Bird better at than LeBron? You can say pretty much everything. Hold on. Is he ahead of Larry Bird? No. No. no what that? was Bird better at? Bird's a better shooter. It's not close. Uh, I think Bird is. I'll agree that he's a better shooter. As, okay, as we, good we, or we, better as a passer. We, a he is not as good or better as a passer. LeBron is a. Larry Bird did hit those full court, those those full court one three second ball <laughs> balls in his hand for less than a second. Still got those. Those are some hard full court passes. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> but overall passer, I still got LeBron over him. Much more fluid, much more uh, natural passer than LeBron James, a creative passer. LeBron James, see, like, for a superstar, he's as good a passer as anyone outside of maybe Magic and Bird. Bird was a better passer. Bird was a better rebounder. The fact is that Larry Bird didn't stay healthy, and the fact is that basketball is played so differently okay. now. When it comes down to the end of a game in a championship series, I would rather have Larry Bird have the basketball. Well, duh. Is there any way on earth you would take LeBron James over Larry Bird in the clutch? I don't know. I know LeBron's not clutch. But I feel safer with him with the ball rather than Larry Bird with the ball. I don't know. There's no way on earth that I'd pick him over Larry Bird in the clutch. I can tell you that much. Larry Bird was not just a superior shooter from anywhere on the court, just like you highlighted. Yeah. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, which LeBron can never brag about, 
But when you talk about money time, whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates cl That's cap. I'm taking game seven LeBron over game seven Larry Bird. But I will give Larry Bird the last shot of the game. But we're talking about a whole game. I'm getting LeBron. But you simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because I can do you whatever can pick I want. Even no one in I'm NBA a human. History over Larry Bird. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going, and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. But even despite all of those numbers, to those who actually saw Larry Bird play. The eye test is all they need. I know no, there are I'm other numbers not. that will support you on LeBron. I may lose this, but you know what? I'm going with these, all four of them. And I watched that dude dominate an Love era that has Larry some of the greatest Bird. players of Bro all said time. All four of them. This isn't a diss on LeBron. Hmm. I'm not dissing LeBron. I love LeBron. We both love LeBron. Everybody appreciates how great he was. But as time passes, it's easy to forget how great Larry Bird was. No, I as time passes, it's also easier to see how good LeBron's getting. He's getting even better. He's not declining. <laughs> So all of that said, right here, right now, Larry Bird remains the greatest small forward ever, period, end of story. I'm never taking a period, end of story from Skip, seriously. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of the video. It's a tough case. It's definitely a tough case. I'm not going to say it's obvious. Me being a LeBron fan, I'm obviously going to have some type of bias. I'm not going to be here and say I'm, I'm, I'm an unbiased guy. But, hey, make sure I like, comment, subscribe. It's a good video, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm just talking on this beat. Like it's just you and just me. We can say it's side out of beef.